everybody. My name is Brandon Jones. I'm the editor in chief of GameTrailers.com. This is Kyle Bossman. Hi. This is Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. That's what we sound like. And we work at Game Trailers and we watch lots of trailers. And this show is called Let's All Go to the Trailers. It is our trailer podcast. If you missed the first part, we talked about four trailers that we thought were super cool this week. To start off the second part of this week's episode, we are going to watch a trailer live that we've never seen before. I like story trailers, I like launch trailers, and I like debut trailers because I think those are like the real pitches. Those are the, the real moments of desperation of like, please like our project, please pay attention to the stuff that we're doing. So today we are going to watch a story trailer for the Delta Rising, I'm assuming expansion pack, to Star Trek Online, a game that maybe every now and then you need reminded that is still online. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Star I'm Trek so fan? Ready. Kyle? Star Trek fan? Not really. Kyle, no. Uh, to a degree. Yeah, I mean, I'm not super, super into Star Trek, but yeah, I'm I've, I've definitely over, over the years, yeah. Had, had my, 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 my periods where I was like, okay, I'm going to watch a lot of Star Trek. But. I'm very excited to see this trailer. Right. Expectations are in check. Highly anticipated. Uh, you're flying too close to the sun. That's true. I don't know why you would do that. What a funny opening shot. But it's clearly in game. Yeah. That was just a way you could see the ship moving. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely gameplay. But these might be cutscenes. So I wonder if these are new planets they're going to get to go to. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Nice. Hey. Lots of titles. Yeah, what was that? Well, if you're really in, I mean, if you're really in yeah. Star Trek, you know who these people are. You know the character names and the actors. Yeah. And you love the fonts, even. Now we will help the friends we left behind. We fight the rising Delta. Voyager's first trip to the Delta Quadrant was a solitary one. We must return to set them. That's a lot of action for a Star Trek game. What's going on here? <laughs> this is a huge battle. Huh. It's totally a Voyager thing. Okay. All right. That there is the reason why this that was a budget trailer. The fade out of the music as the the music <laughs> faded out as the titles came up. That's the opposite of what you should do. I hate a fade out. Yeah, I hate when they're just like, and eh, just uh, end the song. It's but like, you're what? when the <laughs> titles came up at the end, that's when you blast your music. You fade it up. We also end the song. Yeah. Oh. If your trailer's going to end, end the song. Yeah. Yeah. If you when you just kind of fade out, it's like, even like radio commercials and stuff yeah. like that. That always bothers me. Which is like, eh, then it's over, I guess. It's like that. No. That's my primary takeaway. Is it feels budget. Uh, you know, we talked about it was a Star Wars uh, MMO recently. Uh, Old Republic had a very epic feeling trailer. The like, Revan oh, trailer. Yeah. An event is coming. Uh, this feels budget. What, what is that thing? It's like, well, way? these people helped us, so we should we should probably go back and. And help them again. Also, I, it's difficult for me to sense like what we're looking at, like how much of this is gameplay and how much of this is gameplay kind of repurposed as cinema, and how much of this is pure cinema. I, I do think one thing, huge thing, I missed from this trailer is seeing any of these people actually talk. Wait, I don't know if they, I don't know if their lips move in the game. Like if you go up to any, oh, of the I, I doubt it. I doubt it as well. I don't know how much coverage Voyager has gotten the game, so like maybe this is the big Voyager coming out party. It feels like it. I mean, um, I think that's the whole reason that they kind of show them all. We're standing uniting there. all the timelines. Uh, are you interested at all? Did you did you ever at any point get an impulse whatsoever to like, oh, maybe I'll... I mean, obviously, you're, you know, none of, none of us in this room are going to, you know, log into this game and create an account and actually play Star Trek Online. But, like, did it hit you at all? There, right. there, there, was, nah, there was that chubby robot dinosaur who is, he's got, like, ro rocket boosters. He crashes, and I'm like, okay. And then we never see that thing again. Um, would you have liked maybe, like, a little menu of what, of what we're getting? I mean, we got a menu of the cast, No, no, obviously. no. I would want the opposite of that. Uh, basically, th that... Old Republic trailer is how to do this right. You have an expansion to your MMO, make it feel like an event. Uh, the titles kind of work toward that. Seeing Robert Picardo as the Doctor, that's a good idea. For some reason, I think the pacing of them, uh, how they associate with the music, uh, just it does it feels off. Here we go. Here's our chubby Dino. Great. And then oh wait wait, wait go back to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it doesn't feel uh, organized. I guess it doesn't feel planned and plotted and like it's escalating. Uh, 
That's good idea to, to plug your actors, though, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, though, it's the same way when I see movies and television and everything. It's just, you know, ever since I was in film school, everything's just ruined. You know, like, I always, like my brain automatically goes into, like, oh, how'd they do that? And so every single time I hear someone say a line in this, I just, after the line is finished, I picture them, like, looking at the director and being like, was that, was that good? Do you want me to do I can do that again. I can do that, like, more serious or, like, more, that was good? Okay, we'll keep that one. Because it just, it sounds like, oh, fresh out of the booth, you know? Like, they sent all of the audio clips straight to the editor, and he's like, cool, I'm going to put them in, which is why I'm assuming why we're not seeing any lip sync or any sure. cut that scenes you actually get in the game. Of course, I don't play Star Trek Online, so I don't know if there actually are cut scenes, if that's something that you wouldn't expect. Uh, 6.8 from me? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to be meaner. I think this is a, a 5.7. It bums me out. Uh, it, it's uh, no, it does a lot of things right. It's just I don't. I guess it's a feel. That five point seven is a feel. I, I don't like the, what they did with their music, um, and, and um, the way it's edited. No, it's a five point seven. You know, I'm not feeling sorry for it. Step your game up, Star Trek. <laughs> um, second in command, Daniel Bloodworth. What do you say? Man, I uh, I, I don't know. Like it, 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 I think it kind of starts out okay, but then once they, yeah, once they started getting into like all these, these big scenes and action-heavy stuff without any kind of context, it gets really kind of weird. And then again, it's you know, they, you know, they, they expect you to remember everybody's names, and you, you kind of get a bit, a bit of that, and there's like, oh yeah, like then when you see them all standing, there's like, oh yeah, that's that, okay, now I recognize everybody. <laughs> Why didn't you put them a little earlier? Sure. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, this, I mean, it doesn't really do anything to excite me, I guess, uh, and, and again, I, uh, part of, you know, part of it too is that I, I'm not familiar at all with how this game works, because you're going to be interacting with these guys somehow, I, I suppose, but it's not like you're going to be playing as them or anything like that, so, uh, I guess it would probably help to have seen them more in their place like what am I gonna do with them you know I was like oh they're standing there and like what, what significance does that have are they actually gonna have any big impact on things or you know or, they're gonna or send what? you on missions yeah they're gonna send you yeah. away uh, but you know even like having a, some of those kind of cutscenes where like something is happening with this person uh, would have probably helped to sell that a little bit better than hey uh, we hired some voice actors uh, that you're familiar with <laughs> so uh, yeah like I don't know 5.5 Cereza, you haven't felt anything strange recently. There are also seven trailers that came out this week that we have not discussed about uh, at length. We are not going to score these trailers, but I think you should check them out. Um, just like uh, uh, the Duck Dynasty launch trailer that we saw, Bayonetta 2 got an awesome launch trailer. Very exciting. Lots of action, as to be expected. Lots of fun one-liners. It's always weird to me how much, how much time they put on story in the Bayonetta trailers. Like, the story is, I, you know, who cares? Like, the story is an excuse to get from one giant set piece to the next, as far as I care. Context. Uh, it's all about context. I, 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 I but guess. It do, but, but it does set up the drama. Like, if it was literally just action for two and a half minutes, you would, you'd would kind of fall asleep. Like, you need those those beats to kind of set up the next little, you know, jab of action that you're going to see. Uh, you know what this trailer made me think of? It's something you mentioned on GT time. It's a, once in a trailer, you get over two minutes, you should be wrapping it up. This one went to three. And you know what? I kind of felt it. I kind of felt like, you know what? Maybe reel back a little bit. Keep some stuff for the game. That two minute mark, yeah. You gotta yeah, be yeah, careful yeah. once you cross it. Dive Kick Edition Edition Plus. Got a trailer that made you laugh out loud, Kyle. Oh, you saw me laughing at uh, it. Because you, you, you put your headphones on. Yeah. And uh, and you laughed. Uh, did you get a chance to watch that? I know you're having some, some tech Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't get to watch that This one. one's great because it's a guy at a desk just berating the viewer. It's mm -hmm. like, well, you want more content? Here you go. I'm not going to you know, do a terrible job of paraphrasing him, but uh, they shot a guy at a desk, and initially I was taken aback by the poor production quality of, of whatever room he was in and how far he was from the camera and how, you know, it was just a simple desk. Like, you know, even uh, Final Bossman is a better desk than this guy had. <laughs> but the guy's attitude just cracked me up. He yeah. was just like, you know, um, and I think that's something that uh, can be done more. You know, like there's some restaurants where like their whole gimmick is that all the waiters are really mean, you know. and like He calls us, the audience, <laughs> stupid, and we love him for it. It's really great. And it, it obviously doesn't work with every game, but yeah. uh, for him it's really funny. Yeah, I mean, dive kick, yeah. Human Resources. Yes. Wow, did you see this? Sick trailer. Totally sick trailer. Actually, it was kind of curious. Um, I thought it was a trailer of the week contender, and I was kind of curious to talk about it as one of the top four. Um, 
a lot of times I'll see a trailer that has really awesome action music and like the quality of gameplay we're looking at or the epicness or the scope of the gameplay does not match the awesomeness of the music at all. Mm -hmm. And this one does. And it's actually uh, kind of has a cell shaded cartoony vibe to it. And I think it's like not even beta gameplay. I think it's all just test stuff. Like, yeah, they yeah, just yeah. created this video to kind of simulate what the game would be like. And right. there's actually, if the footage you're looking at is curious, if, if uh, you want to learn more about the game, they also have a separate video that you can catch on GT where you meet the developers and they talk about how what you're looking at and how the game actually functions. But there's a clear shift in the trailer where these giant robots just start gobbling up humans. Because you think they're the good guys. Yeah. You think, okay, the robot's are here to save them. And it's like, no, they're eating the humans. It's so good. And just attacking buildings and what using them as weapons and yeah. all sorts of crazy stuff. And it's a Kickstarter trailer. So, yeah, I mean, please, go invest in this game. I want to play that. Um, <laughs> Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham got uh, another voice cast trailer. They, yeah. They've talked about the voice cast in their game before. But uh, got some very funny people, some great one-liners. Conan O'Brien, who's always hilarious whenever he gets crossed over with video games. Kevin Smith, who I didn't know is in the game as himself, along with Conan. Huh. Um, so kind of funny to get their take on it. Uh, the actor who plays Arrow on the, the Green Arrow television is, is voicing Arrow in the game, and so you kind of get his take. A great outtake at the very end of him doing like a couple funny lines. Yeah, really funny juxtaposition of those three people. The guy from Green Arrow's just talk about like, you know, I think he's a compelling character because he's he's just human, he's weak. Kevin Smith is really excited to be in the game because he finally gets to be in a video game. And Conan O'Brien's just like, I don't like video games. I think they're all, I don't want to be associated with them, but my kid said you should be in it. <laughs> it's a good honest vibe and I think you know it's Lego you know Lego Batman 3 beyond Gotham is like do we care about this story do we get why are we playing this game we're playing sure. the game because it's funny we're yeah, playing the yeah, game yeah. to get all these weird characters together so I think it's the perfect vibe for the their advertising to have Paranautical Activity what is going on in this game lots of circle strafing whoa cir it's circle <laughs> strafe the game um, uh, yeah, the trailer's okay but just the gameplay I mean you do yourself a favor and watch this entire uh, trailer lots of uh, crazy twitch stuff going Voxel on voxel stuff going lots on lots of yeah. platforming that looks yeah. virtually impossible Possible. I'm kind of <laughs> curious to see uh, how you control your character and how you move them around the environment that fast. Resident Evil HD Remake got a trailer where they show the difference between uh, the, the original Resident Evil Remake and the new <laughs> HD Remake. <laughs> and where the hell did they shoot this? It's like you can see the like, cable sticking out of the back of the television and like the producer of the is wearing some weird shirt and is just standing in front. It's like they shoot this in with some hotel room or something. I don't know. It just seemed very like slapped together at the last minute. There's a lot of shots from the original game in the HD remake of Chris Redfield literally just standing there in the hallway while he explains something. Yeah. And it's like, it just doesn't seem that pre-planned. I would have liked a little more work to go into this trailer. Uh, for a game that I'm excited about. And it looks gorgeous. They, I think they definitely did show, it took them like two, three minutes to do it, but they definitely did show, you know, some environments from the old game and the new game and, and doing a comparison. But, uh, you know, comparing to something like the excellent uh, Ground Zeroes trailer that we got that showed what it looked like on PS3, PS4, Xbox, oh, and Xbox One. Yeah, that was One. a fun day. Very well produced, yeah. uh, you know, um, from the shots that they chose and everything. And this just seemed very slapped together. So hmm. you can do better than that, Capcom. And finally, Saints Row Got Out of Hell got a trailer. I believe it's called The Seven Deadly Sins. It might be called The Seven Weapons trailer. Uh, where they show all Yo, of the it's, different... It, it was kind of... Yeah, I think that, that kind of made it a little confusing because it seems like, yeah, the... Each sin is correlated to a weapon, so I thought the funniest one to me was Sloth when he's like in the giant lazy boy chair and, and shoots got rockets. The, got yeah, the absolutely. Huge weapons on the arms. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, that definitely seems like a uh, a fun. Um, I don't know. The attitude is really good, and it's you know his the weapons that he has in the game are based on the seven deadly sins, and so uh, I thought it was just very exuberant. And actually, one that I completely forgot to write down on this list. I apologize, gentlemen. Borderlands the pre-sequel got a launch trailer. That's their classic six gajillion guns puking your face off, crazy titles and mm. one-liners and stuff like that. That we would have mentioned that I would have thrown out there actually was uh, uh, somebody on Twitter specifically called it out and said that we should talk about it this week. But it was just so similar to the other trailers that they've done. It was a classic yeah. style of, of all of their other trailers. So I just felt it was kind of in line with stuff that they've done before. Nothing uh, nothing better, nothing worse. Looks like a fun game. Blood, you're playing it now. Eagerly awaiting the review. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, lots of launch player trailers this week because there's lots of crazy games coming out. And lots of other trailers, of course, to watch. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I don't know if we'll be doing this in the future, but all of the other random trailers that I've shown during both parts of this week's Let's All Go to the Trailers, I've actually labeled, which I've gotten many requests oh, in yeah, the comments and on man. Twitter to do. So they're like, you're showing us all these awesome trailers. Why don't you label them? It's like, because that adds 20 to 30 minutes onto the editing time. So you're doing that this week. So I'm going to do it for this one episode. Okay. And then watch those exports, too. And see, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to render that in Premiere before you export it. 
uh, to see how much time that takes me and whether I want to invest that much time in the future. But I get that. People see all this footage and they're like, I want to know what trailer that is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, it, it's definitely gotten crazy the past few weeks. It was like, I wake up in the morning before you even get to work and it's like, trailer, okay, forward, 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 forward. Trailer like, season. It's like trailer season. Like 10 or 12 trailers at least before I get to work and then I got my email pinging me the whole way on the drive-in. So I wish the show was five hours long. We could actually sit and watch every single one of these trailers from start to finish and talk about them, but unfortunately that is just not the case. So hopefully this helps a little bit more in you identifying what the other fun trailers are, uh, and you can go check them out. Uh, if you missed the first part for some reason, you just randomly stumbled across this second part of Let's All Go to the Trailers, there's the first part. There are two parts of the show every week. Uh, and uh, if you come back next week, I will really appreciate it, and Kyle will appreciate it too. Oh, no, we got, we got Trailer of the Week. We got Kyle. This is your segment, Kyle. This is officially your segment. Like, I love Trailer of the Week. Uh, so actually, I want to do Trailer of the Week differently uh, because I feel it's kind of like a strain. Every time we pick Trailer of the Week, we all have to agree on something. And we don't have to agree. I think the best parts of the show are when we don't agree on stuff. So <laughs> individually, I think all of us should pick our own Trailer of the Week. And uh, if those happen to match up, then, uh, then so be it. Um, I think uh, my, the Assassin's Creed Rogue Trailer would be my Trailer of the Week. I thought it was, um, out of all of these things, actually made me more interested in a game because I am interested in Rogue. Uh, I, I dearly loved Black Flag, and so I love all those mechanics, and uh, this made me more excited for a game that I was already excited about, so so hats off to them. Uh, human Resources, my favorite kind of trailer, uh, just where it's revealing information, escalating, uh, funny, creative, uses its music well. I really like that trailer. That's my trailer of the week. Um, I guess, I, I, I think I'm gonna go, go ahead and stick with Civ. Uh, I wasn't really expecting that so much. I feel like, you know, Assassin's, actually, uh, Marcus was tweeting today about, like, yes, there's, there, there are, like, sometimes people are doing too many trailers. It's like, it's like, how, how many Persona trailers have we gotten? And, like, cause sometimes we get, like, two Hyrule Warriors, day. man. Oh my god. Yeah, every yeah. single, you know, every and, weapon and, and I, and, trailer. I, and Assassin's is one of those franchises where it's like, okay, guys, just give us one trailer, just a one trailer a week, at least. And, and, and Far Cry is doing the same thing. Just put it down to one trailer a week. We'll be okay. We can handle it. We can wait another week for the next trailer. Don't need like one or two every day. Do you think <laughs> Civ has had a good campaign? You thought this fit in well with the trailers they've released so far? Yeah, I think this is a good, like, you know, it's it's launching very soon. And I think this is a good kind of like, oh yeah, let's get excited for this. Like we're about to go on this mission. So yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm so glad that uh, Let's All Go to the Trailers came back. Thank you guys for being fans of the show. Thank you for returning for a second week. Hey, you know, if we come back next week, it's officially a show again, guys. <laughs> it won't just be a fluke. So uh, hopefully we come back and hopefully you come back. See you next week.